Today we're going to compare some images using the Atomus Ninja 5 on the Panasonic DVX200 to determine whether using the Ninja 5 with the DVX200 is worth the hassle, weight, and time. We're going to look at two types of comparisons. First, we'll look at sequential comparisons of two color gamut choices. This allows us to see each option in full screen UHD if you so desire. The first comparison is the default Scene 1 color profile. We'll look at the internal codec, which is H.264, compared to three ProRes flavors, LT, 422, and HQ. The comparison continues with Vlog L in the same manner as Scene 1. Then we'll look at some side-by-side -side comparisons. And lastly, we'll do a set of real-world comparisons that I think are quite useful using a blue sky and red leaf tree as the subjects, allowing us to test color, dynamic range, and color banding. Most settings are the same for all clips. They were shot in UHD at 100 megabits per second at 29.97 frames per second. Native ISO, which is 400, shutter at 1 60th of a second. The iris was at f6.0 for all Scene 1 clips and 4.5 for all Vlog L clips. The countertop is my micro studio, where I make stop motion educational videos under a single Draycast studio light set to 5600 Kelvin, and the DVX200 was set to 5600 Kelvin. Zoom was set at zero. Here we see the false color view on the Ninja 5. I'm using my x right Color Checker Video Passport chip chart. The exposure chart on the top doesn't seem to be of great help with the Ninja 5's false color tool. This will take some getting used to. Notice a small, thin area of black that I'm pointing out here. The black here is crushed according to the Ninja 5. And here we see that the highlight on the wrench is blown out, but it should be. It was in real life too. On the waveform, we see the same issue of crushed blacks and blown out highlights. But the histogram on the DVX200 does not show these issues, so by itself, the Ninja 5 offers more accurate exposure tools. For these comparison shots, I did only minimal color grading, just luminance values. No color changes. Here is the internal codec, followed by the ProRes LT in 8-bit, recording on the Ninja V. There is a shift towards magenta in the whites when looking at the dry erase board on the left side, and the overall luminance value fell. Then ProRes 422 in 8-bit, ProRes HQ in 8-bit. Now we have the 10-bit versions, first LT, then 422, and finally HQ. I don't see any differences in the footage recorded on the Ninja, do you? We'll look at selected side-by-side -side comparisons a bit later. Now we switch to Vlog L, which is quickly becoming my favorite color gamut option on the DVX200. The false color view shows good exposure, especially if we look at the top exposure chart on the x right It seems more usable to me, unlike with Scene 1. Because of the gamma curve, we don't have any crushed blacks. For the VLIG L footage, I played with the lift, gamma, and gain wheels and upped the saturation to 90. No other color changes were applied at this point. The same grade was applied to all clips here. We do see a slight magenta shift on the Ninja 5 footage, just like we saw with Scene 1, along with a bit more contrast. Otherwise, I don't see any glaring differences between any of the clips recorded on the Ninja 5. When we look at the side-by-side -side comparisons though, no, let's take a look, shall we? It is easier to see the slight magenta shift on the Ninja 5 footage when looking at the dry erase board and the shadows of the papers on the right. Otherwise, I don't see any differences. But the scopes tell a different story. We see the gaps in the histogram for the internal footage, which is echoed in the RGB Parade waveform. The 422 8-bit footage in ProRes LT has a lot more data than the 420 H.264 footage recorded internally. Now if we look at the center waveform, we see the slight magenta casting in the highlights for the Ninja 5 footage. For the Vlog L footage, we see the same slight magenta cast on the dry erase board on the left and the papers on the right. The scope show us the same gaps in data we saw for Scene 1, especially in the histogram, but as log footage is stretched out, the gaps are much more pronounced. The RGB Parade waveform and waveform indicate that the Ninja 5 footage contains much more data, which is exactly what we expect. In a short bit, we'll see what these gaps mean to a clear blue sky. For this first comparison, I took the Scene 1 footage we saw earlier and tried to match the color of the wrench to the Vlog footage. In the original Scene 1 footage, the wrench was wretched. See what I did there? It was just too desaturated. The wrench is red, much closer to the Vlog footage. But in the process of adjusting the Scene 1 footage, we see more magenta cast being added. A lot more saturation in the green, the yellow, and the blue colors too. Let's take a closer look at the chip chart. 
I think that the first chip for the vlog footage on the top should be just a tad more orange than peach, but the scene one chip on the bottom is just it's just not accurate. When holding the chip charter to my screen, the vlog chips look good. It's it's worth noting at this point that while this is an HP monitor, it is calibrated using my Spider 5 calibration tool and display cal software, so it's pretty true to life. Now let's look at the codex in action. I tried to match the sky as best I could with both luminance and color adjustments, as the sky in the scene 1 footage was just a tad too purple, and the tree was not vibrant, as it was in real life. I used primary and secondary color corrections. These clips show the depth of color and dynamic range differences between scene 1 on the top and Vlog L on the bottom, both recorded in ProRes 422 at 10 bit. The Vlog L clip looks more pleasing, has better color in the shadows, and the tree just looks more alive and attractive. Vlog L gave me the ability to fine tune the tree and the sky to emulate reality as my eye saw it. So to answer the question, is it worth shooting Vlog L? Definitely. Well, what about just recording Vlog L internally and skip adding another piece of hardware onto the rig? Let's compare Vlog L footage shot internally on the top to ProRes HQ on the bottom. There is definite banding in the internally recorded footage and the colors are muted. As YouTube will compress this, you may see banding in the bottom clip, but it's not there for me. Also, the sky isn't as vibrant in the internally shot footage, nor does it have the nuances of blue that the ProRes HQ footage has. Given the three differences, color subsampling, bitrate, and compression, then this is as we should expect. So yes, it is definitely worth recording Vlog L on the Ninja 5. That is nothing new, but I needed to see it for myself. What about changing from 8-bit output to 10-bit output? Is it worth the hassle to change this every time we want to switch from the internal recording to the best we can on the Ninja 5? The top clip was shot in 8-bit, the bottom in 10-bit. The tree looks slightly better in the bottom clip, but the sky looks noticeably better in the bottom clip. Again, YouTube compression likely means banding in both clips, but it's not noticeable in the 10-bit clip on my monitor. So yes, using the Atomus Ninja 5 on the DVX200 is worth the hassle of changing the 10-bit output, the added weight, and the time spent grading Vlog L footage. I won't use it for all my projects, as many don't need this quality. So there isn't enough value for much of what I do, but some of my projects will benefit from the added quality, and I look forward to using the Ninja 5 for those projects and the added benefit of great exposure tools.